us my recent work focusing on self-improvement with large language models. So yeah, the primary focus of my work will be about uh, self-debugging for improving code generation. But I will also touch upon other topics on like how we can enable the large language models to improve its like own performance with some kind of feedback. So as we have seen, so nowadays these Dutch language models have really like enabled uh, many applications. So the simplest like a uh, starting point is basically we can see that this model can act as a chatbot to interact with users. And very different from previous like chatbots, these Dutch language models can really do this open ended like uh, like text generation very well. So basically here this is a demo for ChatGPT. So we can actually ask it the model about like what are large language models. Then basically the model is able to like provide a very detailed description and also like kind of like um is explain all the core uh, techniques related to large language models at a high level. So currently you have seen a lot of like uh, successful applications of uh, large language models, especially on those like uh, challenging reasoning tasks. So here I'm showing this like one of the first works that actually really like uh, show that we can trigger the large language models to achieve pretty impressive mathematical reasoning performance with channel thought prompting. So uh, this work is uh, actually uh, coming out from my team, my team members. So we can see that from the standard future prompting, the idea is that the model input will include like uh, some exemplars to show what's the task we want the model to perform. So for example, here, uh, to solve the math problems, the, the, the question answer pairs include the math problems and the corresponding answer, which is a single number. But we can see that with this standard prompting, typically the performance is not very good. So if we think about it in another way, even for teachers to like uh, basically uh, teach students to solve math problems, usually the teachers do not just give the those the like um, correct answers as the only sing single like uh, feedback. So basically the teacher will also teach the students about how to derive this final answer. So basically we can see this as the intuition for channel salt prompting. So basically uh, besides this like final answer in channel salt prompting, the, the demonstration also includes these intermediate steps, which includes this like, um, this, like um, mathematical calculation. Then with such like a uh, few examples to demonstrate how this mass derivation should work, then this like a uh, prompting method can basically achieve better performance. So this channel sort prompting idea is also applicable to many other like uh, reasoning tasks and um, many other like uh, natural language processing tasks in general. Another very successful like application of large language models is code generation. So here I'm showing the like one of the earliest like uh, large language models on like uh, code generation, which is the OpenAI Codex model. So basically, we can see that here the user can provide a pretty detailed descriptions about what is the functionality um, they want. Then basically, given this like um, description, the model is able to follow the instruction step by step to directly like, generate the code, which can be directly uh, executable. And also we can see that for in this like, uh, generative function, actually it can follow all these like um, very like uh, detailed like um, like requirements uh, in a phase-four way, including these concrete arguments specified in the in the problem description. However, uh, with all these like very promising progress, still there are like some remaining challenges for these large language models. So for code generation specifically. We can see that in general, this error and generated code can still be problematic if we just like try it for the first time. And this does not uh, only happen for those very difficult tasks, which might which uh, it might be expected uh, to to see that the model might make mistakes. But actually, such mistakes can also happen for those seemingly very simple problems. So here I'm showing one example. So basically, in this like uh, in this like problem description. It includes like both a very short like um like test um test description and also some assertion statements. So for human programmers, when we see these assertion statements, actually this make uh, us like um kind of uh, easier to understand what the problem is about, and also usually it can like um enable us to disambiguate the problem description and also to like um uh, really write the code that follows the this like um kind of more formal specification. 
However, if we look into this generated code, we can see that at a high level, it actually follows the natural language description, uh, you, know, you know, like a user query. So basically this query is about like, um, basically um, pre gen calculating the loss amount if one number is like, um, is kind of a smaller than another, otherwise it will just return now, which means that there is like low, no loose here. But if we closely look into this code, the main issue is that actually it does not follow the, these like assertion statements. So it uh, wrongly like swap the order of these two arguments. So basically here we can see that actually uh, for large language models, although they are pretty good at understanding the natural language at a high level, actually they can fail to solve even those very simple coding problems specified with input output samples. So actually like um, they, are, they have a harder time understanding these like um, more formal like a description than those like more free from natural language. So this also show the weakness of these large junction models in understanding code execution. Learn how to fix this problem. So earlier when I was uh, a team member in the like uh, alpha code like uh, group, uh, where we try to develop a language model to solve competitive programming problems. So our approach here is to is that instead of like just on generating one solution per problem, we allow the model to generate uh, multiple samples. Then we perform a code selection process based on execution results to basically pick up uh, a few final like um, best responses for the full evaluation. But the main limitation of such approaches is that the sample efficiency is in general suboptimal. First, we, it usually requires a lot of model samples to select from because um, in, man, in many cases, this selection is based on some kind of majority voting. So this, um, by, by design, it needs like, um, like uh, multiple samples and, uh, to really achieve a decent performance gain. And in particular, if we look into this like a uh, code selection or code re-ranking procedures, these approaches do not really utilize those wrong predictions um, that actually can be partially correct. Because when we look at this like a uh, predicted code, even for those like very challenging uh, pro problems, at least part of the generative programs is usually reusable. And, um, but uh, if we perform this like code selection process, then each of the sample is generated independently. So uh, this means that the wrong mistake can just uh, repeat again and again, uh, despite that for humans, or once we execute the code, we know that uh, some programs should that should be fixed and, it, um, and the same mistake shouldn't happen again. So if, so if we think about us as human programmers, actually human written code in the first round also might not be perfect. So this is why debugging is such an important skill even for the top human programmers. And in fact, actually we can consider this debugging skill as one differentiator to tell those good, good programmers apart from like other, like let's say beginning programmers. Because in general, those good and more experienced programmers are able to identify the bugs by themselves. So they do not necessarily need another person to point out what, what the issue comes from. So usually this debugging process is done by investigating the execution results and then have a, like a very careful reasoning about the code semantic meaning and what is the missing in the current implementation. So basically in our like uh, self debugging project, our goal is to teach large language models to also debug their own predicted code to really learn from those like um, feedback that tell them uh, there might be some, be some potential issues in their code in, in, in the generated code of large language models. So our like debugging process is motivated by robot duck debugging. So the high level idea of robot duck debugging is that for humans, once we get stuck into like this coding process, so instead of directly asking someone else for help, we can have like something like uh, on, our, on, our, on our desk, it can be a robot duck or something that cannot give us any like very like uh, concrete or targeted feedback. But then with this like, uh, with this another object, uh, we will like uh, try to explain our code line by line. And in many cases, when we are trying to like uh, have this very detailed like explanation of, of the code to ourselves, this kind of forces us to look into those all those implementation details. And in many cases, in the process of explaining the code, we will suddenly realize what are the where are the issues come from, and this actually helps us uh, debug the code without like uh, 
any like a uh, like very like uh, helpful feedback from for other people. So this is the intuition of like um of of like uh, our self debugging procedure. So right now I will like provide this like a framework of how we implement this like idea motivated from human debugging process. So basically for self debugging, each debugging turn has like three steps. So the first step is that we will um, ask the model to basically uh, generate the code. Then in the second step, we will have the, we will like have another like a code executor to actually execute the code and provide some execution like uh, results. So these results can be the concrete like um, program output, or in those cases when there are any execution errors, these error messages will also like um, be like uh, given to the to a large language models for the follow up debugging procedure. Then basically we will ask we will actually uh, instruct the model to. Um, do a line by line explanation of the generated code. Well, this is it's like LM generated code explanation and execution results will then be like uh, used for the model itself to generate a feedback message, which indicates whether the predicted code is correct or wrong. So, if the model thinks the current prediction is correct, then this like debugging process terminates. Otherwise, all this like uh, previous generated code and this like feedback message will be then given back to the LLM itself, so the model will do another round of debugging. And this debugging process terminates uh, until, the, uh, until the model thinks its own prediction is correct, or like after like several rounds where the model cannot make any more improvement. So here I want to note that in this self-debugging process, there's like no, uh, no fine tuning of the model, so we directly uh, reuse uh, some like um, pre-trained capable of coding large language models. And also throughout the process, um, all these like, like LM generated code and the code explanation, they all come from the large language model itself. So the only external feedback comes from the executor, which actually uh, runs the code and basically tells if there are any execution errors or what's the, what are the execution results. So here I want to show a quick demo with the, with the BART model with the same example problem from the pre previous failure case. So here we can see that actually the BART model makes the same mistake. It also like uh, wrongly swaps the order of the two arguments um, uh, of the function. Then basically with this execution result, we then like um, basically um, give back the, the, like, uh, the unit test where the model generates the wrong answer. Then basically with this feedback message, the BART model is able to quickly fix this like um this if condition in the code, then this the resulting code becomes accurate. So now I want to show like uh, some concrete coding applications where self debugging can improve the performance. So first, I want to show this task of test to SQL generation, where we show that self debugging can be done without unit tests. So for test to SQL. Uh, the, the, there are main, two main challenges. So the first challenge is that uh, this like, task requires cross-domain generalization. So what do I mean here? Because in general, basically, uh, we want to like um, translate the, the natural language question into a corresponding SQL query. So um, for, for each question, it correspond, can correspond to some database schemas. So if we assume that we want uh, one single model to be able to handle multiple different database schemas, so this means that basically this model needs to understand different kinds of uh, databases described in the context. So this uh, also like uh, makes our like a uh, context lens for the large function model longer. So the model also needs to have some understanding of this like long context input. The second challenge is that uh, for text to SQL generation, usually we assume that the database items are not visible uh, to the model. So basically, uh, it also means that uh, we do not provide the accurate, uh, those unit tests for testing the, the correctness of the SQL query. So basically, this model is only given the natural language, natural language description in its input. So this also means that the model needs to infer the code correctness by itself. So basically, our approach here is to perform cell debugging by, uh, rely, by relying primarily on code explanation. So basically, this explanation is aiming to find the potential inconsistency between the generated code and the input question. 
So let's like uh, take this uh, use this example uh, um, on the screen to explain the process. So let's say the question is uh, asking which customers have both on road and shift as order status list customer names. So basically, at a high level, we can see that this this like a uh, question uh, should return a, a list of like a uh, customer names, which means it is a table with a uh, one column, and also it it might, it should have a well condition, which is a condition which is re represents the intersection of of two like different like um diff different like values of a single table column. So with that, uh, basically in the explanation step. It, uh, the model will first explain the question. So basically, here this question explanation returns uh, re returns what's the what is the output type of this SQL query. So here you can see that the model correctly infers that the what, what the like uh, execution should return one table with a single column. Then for code explanation, basically here we are asking the model to explain its own generated code. So we can see that basically uh, in the explanation. The model explains the SQL query clause by clause, and it is explains all these like different like um select clauses, well clauses, and also these like um join clauses. So actually, uh, when if we if we look into the SQL query explained by step two, we can see that this is the wrong SQL query, because uh, basically here in the well condition, it is it is an uh, it uses the all uh, keyword, while actually in the question we want we, what we want is the intersection. Then basically with this explanation of both the code and the question, then the model will, will do a, do a su summarization. Basically this summarization will indicate that there, there is um, there's an inconsistency between this like, code explanation and question explanation, which means that the predicted SQL query is wrong. So basically the feedback message asks the model itself to fix the SQL. Then in the second round, basically the model changes the all keyword to end but still, this is a this is a wrong prediction because here the where clause uh, contains like um, mutual, mutually exclusive conditions, which means that this like SQL query will always return an empty table. Then in another round of the revision, this time the model correctly utilizes this this intersect keyword, which then like basically fixes the prediction. The second application for self-debugging is code translation. So here the task is to translate code in one programming language into another. So since basically here, we already have the code as a reference, so which already gives us the concrete execution results we want. So for this task, we assume that all the unit tests are available for debugging. So basically this time, the large range model does not need to infer the code correctness it can just focus on fixing the wrong code. When the unit has a uh, like uh, visible to the model, we can also allow the model to like uh, basically generate feedback formats using more information and also it can we can also see the importance of different like uh, sources of information for debugging. So the first like feedback is what we call simple so simple feedback is a very short uh, universal feedback for all wrong code and also for all correct code. So basically here for all the wrong code, the feedback message basically just says that the code is wrong, please fix it. So here we can see that for the simple feedback, it does not provide any like very informative like um like a uh, description for any like a uh, single code. So this is so basically this feedback message is the same for all kinds of like errors made by the model. Then for unit test feedback, the difference is that we also include the concrete execution results in the feedback message. So this can be the execution results uh, for the low stack failed unit tests, or it can also be those runtime error messages. Then when we use the code explanation, again, we can see that this will be a line by line explanation of the implementation. So here on the slides, uh, we, we briefly show this explanation of C++ and Python we can see that this explanation is an interleaving between the, each line of code and also the natural language description. And finally, uh, actually motivated by like, like the human debugging process in IDE, where we might uh, try to also check this, as, this execution block by block or line by line. We also like basically uh, ask the model to uh, 
to like generate this execution uh, traces um, for, for its debugging. But one like difference here is that actually th this execution trace is not coming from the actual code execution. This execution trace is also predicted by the model. So basically we ask the model to like simulate the execution process and see like how it can help the model understand the code. So in Transity, we find that in this case, definitely the generated execution traces can be problematic because there's no like actual execution, but still this execution trace helps the model to understand uh, what is will be the execution behavior uh, for each block or each line of the code. And it can actually, um, in many cases, help the model to improve its debugging performance. So here is the overview of these like uh, different like, uh, feedback formats. So you so typically the, this like debugging process starts with a general instruction, and uh, especially when we when we require the model to generate code explanation or the traces, we will add extra instructions like for example explain the the list like code line by line or basically trace the execution of the code, and then after this general instruction, the model will perform this like debugging process turn by turn. The third application we consider in our work is a uh, text to Python generation. So basically here, we utilize this MVPP benchmark where basically the problem description includes both natural language and also like one unit test. Then we, for each problem, we also have two hidden unit tests for the full evaluation. Since we do not give all the unit tests to the model uh, as it's like for its input and also for its debugging process, this means that passing the given unit test itself does not necessarily mean that the predicted code is correct. So the model still needs to infer the code correctness when the predicted code passes the given unit test. So here I want to show the overall results of the self-debugging process for all these like, different coding applications. And we try this idea for like a different like, uh, coding models. This include the CodeS model, GPT 3.5 and GPT 4 from the OpenAI model families. And also we tried, we evaluated on this star coder, which is an open source coding large language model. We can see that uh, for this like baseline, this means that we just um, ask the model to directly generate the code without any debugging procedure. So for the baseline, uh, definitely the capability of different models vary, but in all the cases with cell debugging, uh, it can consistently boost the performance for these like uh, different models. So now we want to like basically look into some uh, dif differences uh, in each each like part of this like table to highlight some observations. So first, we want to compare the performance with different types of feedback in feedback formats. So in general, we can see that. Um, Basically, for all these like different feedback formats, we will add more information in, in, in for debugging. The debugging performance usually improve. And notice that here, even for the simple feedback, uh, it uh, it is just a universal like a uh, message saying that the code is correct or wrong. Still, in the cases of uh, like Python code generation, we still utilize the code execution to indicate the code correctness. So this is why simple feedback still can improve over the baseline a lot, because at least for those wrong code, it gives the model another chance to generate a, di a different, like a new code, which might like, um, in fact like, uh, f or fix the previous error. And we can see that here, the execution results is a very crucial feedback like uh, source. Adding this like a uh, unit test execution consistently improves the performance all over the generic simple feedback. And also this like uh, uh, generated code explanation can uh, provide additional performance gain. And this is especially true for those like uh, capable models, which can have a good semantic understanding of the code. Another like uh, observation is that actually this self-debugging can be triggered with few short prompting. Because actually for this like code as model, it is a it is a pre-trained only model without any instruction tuning. So if we directly ask the model to generate to debug its own code, it uh, will not like, really like for, like behave as all we want. But basically, if once we can give it a few a few examples of how this debugging process should behave, then actually CodeS model is very good at following these kind of like future examples 
including the format and also like how it um can like um like um, understand the code semantic and semantics and how it can make the target fit fixes. So uh, basically, we can see that actually for like spider benchmark, which is for test to SQL generation, Codex performs the best uh, with future prompting because uh, compared to other models, it can follow future examples better. And then if we look at the, the performance improvement for, for, for GPT-4 and Codex, also, for example, on MBPP for test to Python generation, the initial performance of GPT-4 is much better than Codex. But actually, if we if we can look at this performance gain enabled by self debugging, they are pretty similar. They are they all can improve performance by around like um eight to ten percent. Then then uh, we want to discuss uh, how self debugging can really improve the sample efficiency. So here basically uh, we are showing this self debugging performance uh compared to the baselines. Uh, when we allow the model to generate different number of samples. So if we look at this uh, performance of self debugging starting from one sample compared to the self to the baseline performance with 16 samples, we can see that the performance uh, are pretty similar. So this basically shows that if we use self if we apply self debugging from graded decoding, actually it can match the baseline uh, with over like uh, 10 times samples. So, so basically, this means that with self debugging, because it can utilize those like um uh like, um in some more feedback from the previous samples, so you can actually learn from previous mistakes and improve the improve the performance more quickly than just naively uh, allowing the model to do more trials. Then we want to really understand what kind of uh, error types can be fixed by self debugging. So here I'm showing these breakdown results for test to SQL. So basically in this benchmark, uh, there's a, this, is, there is a categorization to break it down into like a multiple difficulty levels where the difficulty level is um, annotated by the complexity of the ground truth SQL queries. So we can see that although uh, the overall performance on, with self debugging on text to SQL is generally around 3%, but actually, uh, if we look at those like harder questions, especially these ex extra hard questions, actually self debugging can improve performance by nine percent, which is much more significant than those easier problems. So when we look into these those like uh, successful like fixes, we can see that in general self debugging is very capable at fixing those very subtle mistakes in the code. So this is especially like um like um like. Like often often happen for those like uh, more complicated SQL queries because usually it has like those like structures like like uh, for example there are some nested uh, SQL subqueries and also there are more well conditions and selected columns in the final SQL. So if we just ask the model to directly generate a SQL query without any fixes, the model usually produces those predictions that can miss some uh, subtle details. But with this self debugging process. By looking at the by looking closely at the difference between the question and also the exp explanation of the code, usually it helps the model to really identify these missing pieces or those like um re redundant predictions. So this helps improve performance for those more complicated SQL query prediction. And there's a note here. So this is also similar to human debugging process because debugging is usually about like um like really like a uh, like um uh, trying to find those implementation uh, issues it is not about really like um fundamentally uh, improving the reasoning process of how we can generate the code so if basically um the model cannot really understand what's the algorithm to use or how to do the implementation at the first place then debugging itself does not really like uh, improve the model uh, capability in terms of like um in terms of like solving those like uh, intelligently harder questions. So uh, basically, if we really want the model to fundamentally solve those harder questions, we still want the model to generate like better initial uh, attempts. But uh, once the direction is accurate, then self debugging can help the model to like basically uh, make the details more accurate and also to like uh, fix those like um, implementation issues in the actual code. 
So uh, finally, I want to like really discuss this like uh, very important piece of code execution because earlier we discussed that those these unit tests can improve the model uh, performance uh, a lot. So here, basically, I'm showing this like baseline where we basically um, just like ask the model to perform self debugging without using any code execution. So even so, basically, uh, this uh, this means that even for those cases uh, where unit tests are available uh, for the simple feedback, we just ask the model to completely infer the code correctness by itself. So here we can see that uh, definitely uh, the self debugging performance will be like less like um, significant without code execution. Earlier the improvement is uh, usually around like a uh, ten percent, but here the performance improvement is uh, generally like um be generally be below like five percent. But still, we can see that um, for for those like um, models like Codex and GPT-4, on this like uh, Python task where the model has like better understanding of the code like semantic meaning, still like um, it can um, improve the performance by up to a five percent performance gain. So in this case, this like uh, this execution trace feedback actually uh, provides very helpful information for cell debugging and generally improve the performance across different models. Even though this execution like process uh, can actually ha have some like um, make make some wrong make some mistakes in inside, but still it helps the model to really understand this execution procedure. So um, this observation of like uh, of like uh, the importance of code execution actually also like uh, connects to our more recent work showing the effect of uh, self correction for those reasoning tasks include mathematical reasoning and also like uh, text reasoning, common sense reasoning. So basically uh, here we are comparing like two versions of self-correction. One is like what we call Oracle. Oracle means that we will utilize the ground truth answer for correction. So this means that uh, again, the model will first generate the initial rounds of the solutions. Then we, we allow the model to perform self-correction only when we will see that basically the generated uh, solutions in the first round are wrong. So this means that uh, by design, code cor self correction with Oracle feedback will always improve performance because it it like um, never turns a correct like a solution into a wrong one. Then with that, we can see that with uh, although this self correction with Oracle feedback can significantly improve performance on all these different tasks. But actually, when we uh, remove this Oracle feedback, which is shown in the table below, the actually the performance with self-correction uh, like uh, nearly always drops, and sometimes the this like performance de degradation can be very significant. The main reason is exactly because these uh, large language models themselves are still have some like uh, problems for justifying the correctness of all its own predictions for those like um, reasoning problems when there's no external feedbacks. So basically, um, so so basically, this uh, also shows that in general, for like self improvement, we still ideally want some like uh, valid external feedbacks. So this is why actually for code generation, this like um, self debugging process is uh, more natural, because like even for humans, when we try to like we are trying to debug our like own code, we was we also like can debug better when we can. Uh, when we are using an ID and also when we can really like um, leverage an external executor to like uh, tell us what are some uh, execution errors inside our implementation. Well, for solving more like um, like other like uh, problems, like for example, mathematical uh, reasoning, it is uh, like um, it requires, usually requires uh, humans to um, basically just just try to figure out the figure out the issues by themselves, especially in the exam setting where uh, it is definitely not a very like um, realistic assumption to think that there's um, there's an oracle uh, telling you whether the answer is correct, and you can just uh, keep keep like uh, trying it out in in the test setting. So basically, in this self debugging process, we show that we can teach the large language models to debug its own predicted code. And this can actually be done by future prompting as well. So this means that even if the large language model itself was not specially tuned for debugging, uh, such as the OpenAI Codex, still we can we can see a, like a very like notable improvement achieved by self-debugging. 
So basically, we can we show this like a significant improvement across like several coding tasks, and this can also like um happen for those those tasks where there is no unit test, including the text to SQL generation tasks. I also want to note that uh, self debugging is not just an empirical approach approach to improve the coding performance. We also uh, like uh, consider it as another indicator of the LLM coding capability. So uh, in the future, uh, I, I imagine that um, there will always be some mistakes made by the large language model for code generation. So same as human programmers, we always make mistakes. But if the model is able to basically uh, uh, do this like, debugging by itself, by utilizing those like um, available like information, by interacting with the, with the code executor, then um, the model with a better de like self debugging capability can still be considered as a stronger and more reliable like code like a coding model to really assist us in our like um the, the daily like um programming jobs. So uh, so far we have seen that basically we can um design these like uh, advanced like prompting techniques which can trigger the LLM capabilities. For example, channel stop prompting can like uh, trigger the model to like uh, basically solve um, work like um, challenging reasoning tasks by like uh, basically like uh, deriving these intermediate steps, and also like at least like self debugging procedure allow the model to actually also fix its own wrong predictions even if the initial predictions are are like um, have some problems. However. So far, we have seen that these like existing large range models are in general pretty sensitive to prompt design. So here I'm quoting this like table from the table from the paper large language models are zero short reasoners. So this is the paper that um like um basically advocating this like uh, instruction. Let's think step by step. So here this table shows this like a uh, zero short performance for different instructions. On the on, on this like um on, on multi arithmetic, which is a math mathematical reasoning task, we can see that uh, for those instructions in the same category, especially these instructive uh like uh, prompts, actually all of them seem pretty reasonable to humans, and it is actually hard to tell uh, what are some like um semantic differences among them. But if we use these different instructions um to uh, uh, and apply it them to them input prompts for the language models. Actually, we can see a very huge performance difference uh, with these different instructions. And, um, and for some reason, this testing step-by-step -step achieves the best performance. So since these large language models are pretty like um, kind of uh, pretty sensitive to different prompts, and there's like really no like um, intuitive like um, heuristics about which kind of prompt can work well, it usually requires a bit like tuning for each task. So our question here is that how we can automate this prompt design so that uh, we can basically uh, allow the model to identify the optimum prompt for itself. So this is one goal of our like, recent project, large language models as optimizers. So basically our approach here is that we can utilize the large language model itself to propose uh, it, like new prompts to improve its own performance. So the key ideas here include two parts. First, we basically describe this optimization problem in natural language. So in our case, we want to optimize the prompt. So for the concrete approach, actually we, we have this, this like very simple mechanism where we basically we ask the model to leverage the past optimization trajectory represented as a, a assorted like a solution score pairs. So in, in our full work, we actually apply this framework to like different optimization tasks, including like optimizing prompts and also doing some classic optimization um, uh, like, uh, challenges such as like those combinatorial optimization problems. But in this talk, I will focus on this prompt optimization, uh, which show how the model can self-improve um, with this like uh, iterative process. So basically here, I will show the concrete setup for prompt optimization. So basically in this loop, uh, we can incorporate like a uh, two uh, rows for the large range model. The first row is called the scholar. So basically the scholar will evaluate the accuracy of the current generated instruction. Then for the optimizer, 
it will propose a new instruction given all these like old ones and also some examples to show what's the task the model is going to optimize. And because we, as we can imagine, this optimization process can like uh, happen multiple steps and uh, this uh, trajectory might exceed the context length limit. So basically for the, for the meta prompt for optimization, we will allow it to keep like a uh, top instructions with their accuracies. So here we just uh, arbitrarily keep like top 20 to fit into the context length limit. So here we are showing one example meta prompt for GSMAK. So GSMAK is a very popular uh, mathematical like uh, reasoning benchmarks. So here we can see that this like, meta prompt includes some high level instructions, which for example says that we uh, we are going to like um op optimize um we are going to like uh, perform this task. You can write some new like uh, new instructions and uh, to achieve a higher score. And also there are some like um, descriptions about like, what the task is about. So uh, specifically in the top part, there's a, there's a trace of like um, previous like instructions with their scores. So concretely these scores are just uh, the accuracy on a few like uh, examples where we select as the training set. And then basically um, in, the, in the bottom part, there's also a block about examplers. So here basically we will show uh, what the question answer formats and also where these like um, generated like instructions will be inserted in into the model response. With that, here we want to show some uh, results. So first, we want to show these results on GSMAK. So basically, uh, here for all these like uh, instructions, including loads from the previous work and also for our own generating instructions. They are evaluated to the like, pump 2 l model from Google, and uh, this prompt, and basically we perform zero shot prompting here. So for our approach for optimization, our starting point is the general instruction that solves the problem, which achieve an accuracy of a sixty percent. So this is a uh, much lower than the than the testing step by step instruction. But starting from this like very weak and general instruction. We can see that our best prompt um, actually outperforms the baseline by um, around eight percent. So this prompt is uh, what we what we show here. Uh, take a deep breath and work on this problem step by step. And actually, uh, this like performance can match the future accuracy of the same of the same model. So uh, for us as humans, so probably um, we might not uh, imagine that adding this like uh, take a deep breath can actually help the model improve performance by such a large margin. But uh, basically, here we can we can see this very interesting like um like um phenomenon that the model just uh, basically discovers uh, such instructions by itself. Basically, it, it shows that um by adding some encouragement, this model can achieve much better performance on this mathematical uh, reasoning task. In general, we can see that these like uh, LLM optimized instructions can just outperform human written ones across different reasoning tasks. So here we also like show this performance on the big bench hard task, which is a collection of like different types of uh, problems, um, including like sim symbolic reasoning, logical reasoning, and also like some like um, other like um, like um, uh, arithmetic reasoning uh, tasks. So basically, um, here we can see that the list like all the all these bars represents the performance like uh, improvement by comparing our generated instructions versus the baseline. So the left um figure is a is like comparing to less things step by step. The right figure is uh, comparing with the starting point. So here actually we uh, ask the model to start from an empty like instruction. So we can see that its performance improvements is uh generally like across the broad. And so and actually the improvement can be uh, up to 50%. So um, here I'm, I'm showing this like, um, like model performance uh, during this like, iterative optimization procedure. So we can see that actually, uh, if we look at this uh, graph, it uh, seems to uh, be pretty like um, similar in terms of styles to these like uh, traditional optimization graphs. So basically, we, uh, at, at the beginning, the, the accuracy just uh, increases with more optimization steps, and then it uh, plateaus at some point. And there might be some variance, like um, in the meantime, 
but in general, we can see a very clear upward trend. And this, uh, this happens across like uh, different large junction models and also different tasks. And um, then we also show this like um, transferability of these generating instructions. So basically um, here we are taking this uh, instruction from the GSMAK and we also evaluate this instruction for other like uh, mathematical reasoning tasks. We can see that in general, these like um, these instructions are still transferable to other tasks of the, of the same style. And also, uh, also like uh, basically this instruction is not optimized for these other benchmarks. Still they perform like better than those like um, baseline instructions. So basically from this like uh, part, we can see that uh, we, we uh, basically large junction models can also optimize their own uh, prompts. Uh, this can be done with a very simple meta prompt. So this meta prompt includes the just the past instructions and their scores, and also exemplars to demonstrate the task. And, uh, def and we can also add some meta instructions. So this can be some general instructions, just asking the model to um, basically uh, gen generate generate something new with a, with a higher score. And actually we can also add some customized instructions about the, the style and the, the format of these generated prompts if, if it helps improve performance. And also in this way, we can make the instructions more customizable. Another perspective to view this work is that in some sense, this prompt optimization also demonstrates a weakness of the current large range models because we can see that semantically similar instructions might have like a very different um, perf uh, final performance. So from this perspective, so um, that definitely like um, um, we, we, want, we want future LM to be more robust to different uh, prompts. But at the same time, we can see that this, like, um, this optimization process or this self-improvement procedure also helps the model to mitigate this weakness by basically allowing the model to fix its, its like, um, own weakness by uh, basically uh, trying to find those, like, um, those instructions that can be better for them. So this can also uh, help the model to overcome this issue and also to um, basically improve its own like, task performance. So uh, to summarize, in, in this like uh, talk, basically we discussed like two like uh, like many discussed like two projects aligned with this like self improvement capability. So first, like for self debugging, we show that large range models can debug their own predicted code, and also for this optimization process, we can show that large range models are able to optimize the prompt for themselves. And like a uh, one like a uh, common like um. Com common property of uh, like re revealed by by these like two projects and also the like a uh, self correct reasoning project is that basically we can see that self improvement works better when we assist the model with valid external feedback. For example, for self debugging, code execution is very helpful for allowing the model to basically overcome its weaknesses in in terms of understanding like a uh, like this like a uh, code execution results and also. Uh, like the, the deeper like um semantic meaning revealed by this like um this like block by block or line by line execution process. And then for prompt optimization, we basically uh, also provide the model with the with a quality score of each prompt, which can be the task accuracy. So this like of uh, this feedback message also allows the model to better understand what kind of prompts is um is is better is better for themselves. So basically, they can try to like improve improve the prom, improve the prom and also to optimize it, it uh, towards its like um its like um task performance and also to help itself to um, overcome some weaknesses which might be revealed by those like um low quality prompts. So uh, this is the end of my talks. Thanks for listening. And uh, now um we we can like uh, answer some questions from the audience. Uh, thank you, Sun Yunshan. And yes, attendees, you can feel free to post your questions on the chat or if you would like to unmute yourself and ask your questions or raise your hand so that I'll unmute the participants and you can ask your question directly. 
I think uh, there are a couple of questions in the chat. Uh, one question was uh, asking for references to the research papers that was discussed uh, today. Um, and yeah. Yeah, so I think in the, yeah, in, in the slides, like in, in some slides, there are some references, but uh, sure, I can, I can post the things in the chat or if there's any better way, I can just send send a paper. So basically the first, so for the, the first paper is uh, if you search for cell debugging, you can find the paper. The second paper is just called large language models as optimizers. And uh, and also for the for the like reasoning task, uh, it's basically the, the paper title is like um, large language models cannot self correct reasoning yet. Yeah, I'm happy to add the links uh, um, in the chat. Uh, yes, and that will uh, be a real help to the participants. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I see the participants had very insightful time on the chat. They're sharing their appreciations. Yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there's a question. What is the level of complexity of the coding tasks given to LLMs in the results shown. Can you elaborate on an easy, intermediate and hard task? If you can as well scroll through the chat, I think you'll be able to locate this uh, question now, uh, Um. Uh, yeah, so, so sorry, I can, uh, so which, which question are you referring to? Uh, I think uh, it's just, uh, let me uh, repost that question so that it's mm -hmm. easier. Okay. Give sure. me a minute. Sounds good. Yeah. So here is the question. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I can see the question now. So basically, this question is about the complexity of uh, each coding task. Um, so um, basically here for um, for the text to SQL task, uh, we can we can see that um, basically actually the so basically uh, there are two like uh, there are four difficulty levels. So the the, e the easy, medium, hard, and extra hard. So basically for the easy and medium, uh, they usually like just they usually include the the very common like uh, SQL clauses like uh, select well and join. And for the hard and extra hard, uh, they will include some other key keywords like uh, for example, uh, they, they, will do, they will do some like um, in inter intersection and uh, also there will be some nested SQL, SQL queries. So basically this is why like uh, self debugging can improve this like more complicated SQL queries more because uh, there are more complicated, there are more, more, more structures here. So for the code translation task, so uh, actually um, here it is more of like a fu function, function level translation. So uh, the, the mo most of the complexity here comes from like a different uh, language features. This is where the model will make the most of the mistakes. And uh, for the least like uh, text to Python generation. So yeah, this is a function level uh, generation from, uh, from like, uh, you, from, um, from, from some like, um, for short natural language description and unit test to the actual code. So here the complexity mainly comes from to uh, understanding the algorithms. So I would say for these like three tasks, um, in general, the complex, uh, the code like learns itself is at the intermediate level. It is not a like kind of um, a project level code generation, but uh, in general, it is, it is a combination of the algorithm understanding and also uh, also like uh, some kind of implementation details and also understanding of the language features, yeah. Hope that answers the query. Uh, there are a couple of more questions on the chat window. Mm -hmm. If we could pick up uh, one or two based on the interest of time. Yeah, sure, let me try.
would you like me to read it for you, Sunjun? Yeah, let me let me try to find find a question. Yeah, um, I think there's one from Warren Jackson. Yeah, so um, uh, I think that there's a there's a question like saying that um, yeah, how how hard is it for human to bring AI generated code to a ninety nine percent compared with like like hand coding from the, from the, from the beginning? Um, yeah. So actually, uh, this is a great question. So in general, like when people are like debating about like how the this like generative like um models can help the, the people, it is usually about like how they can actually improve the efficiency of like a uh, human human work. But actually, I would say that in terms of code generation, um, in, right now if we just think about it too, so uh, if we just if we can really provide the, the model with some like informative like instructions on how the code functionality should look like. In general, the model is still able to write very well formatted code and, and uh, especially the code is usually like accompanied with some with some comments. So basically um, here, uh, so this is why like uh, I would say um, some feedback information such as code execution can help because it can immediately uh, filter out some very clear mistakes uh, from, from, from a code and also uh, and also, uh, currently, the model is also pretty capable of understanding such kind of like um, coding mistakes. So in this case, actually, the model can help a lot. Um, yeah. So uh, then, in terms of like um, the the, con the concrete like uh, accuracy, I would say that uh, currently it is still like a bit uh, challenging to like require the model to perform those like higher level like um, like a uh, planning of a large project. But the model is pretty like it. It will be better to um, just uh, ask the model to fill in some like um, some some small details. And in many cases, the model at least can provide a good starting point for the for humans to review. Yeah. Thanks for the question. Uh, there is another one from Michael, if we could answer that, uh, Sunyanshan. I think it's the most recent question on the chat window. Yeah, I, I see this question. So, uh, yeah, the question is saying that um, the LLM itself is not uh, improving, but the improved prompt is elicited a, a better response. Is that the is, is that right? Yeah, so basically, uh, in this like uh, in in the, this like uh, self correction, self debugging process, including the optimization process, actually we are reusing the the same like uh, pre trained LLM. So uh, actually, this is also like um one one reason why like the right now LLMs are pretty popular because we can see that the model can like uh pretty achieve just a good performance um with without additional training across many different tasks. But basically, uh here. Uh, uh, we would like to, yeah. Uh, one, one, like, uh, one understanding is that basically we can have just a uh, different, the different prompts to allow the model to achieve like better uh, responses. So this can be revealed by the channel of sort of, uh, prompting paper and also like many other like uh, recent like prompting techniques. But basically, uh, for the self improvement, it is more about like uh, how the model can also like uh, understand its its own like uh, response and also how it um it's, at some point it can also be about like how it can how this model can interact with the, if we think about it another way, it is uh, how the model can actually interact with the external world and collect the feedback to keep improving its, it itself. So uh, basically, I think uh, here, uh, so in general to, uh, in, to improve the LRM performance, so definitely one way is to just, um, is to directly train the model so that it can generate the initial um, uh, re responses with a higher quality. So this, so the, for the, so the cell improvement work I discussed uh, today, it is more from another angle, which is showing that how the model can just um, generate better responses by, by this like um, more interactions and also by um, more like um, kind of, um, um, and also by revisiting its, its own like, uh, its, own, its own predictions and, and to how it can actually identify its own mistakes. Yeah, thanks for the question.
are there any more questions, uh, participants? I know the session was very insightful and interesting and open a foray of thoughts for us to think about uh, self debugging LLMs and how we can utilize them to improve our LLMs. Uh, so, um, Yes, we will share the uh, paper links along with the uh, slide deck. That helps, yeah. If there are no more questions, I think. There's one question, quick question, yes. Uh, what can be done within a prompt to keep the context high quality? I find often that Bing or OpenAI often trips over when there's a lot of code to analyze or refactor. Yeah, uh, thanks for the question. So yeah, in Perkery, uh, we also find that, for example, with, um, at, uh, I, I didn't put it in the slides here, but for example, for cell debugging, actually like uh, after, because here uh, there's a slide showing this like, um, in, like provence like um difference difference in terms of this like um uh, to show the sample efficiency so uh, actually in practice we find that in general for cell debugging its performance improves the most in this in the first term but it still improves with uh, multiple terms but improvement becomes that significant so there are like uh, two like uh, understandings of it why is that basically um the model can just um identify the, the mistakes that very quickly so basically um more, more terms might not be like um might, might not help as much because this is a uh, self debugging right so basically uh, the model uh, so in in all the in all this like um terms the model just try to find the mistakes by itself so if the model cannot find one mistake in the in the first trial it, it also makes it harder to find in, in finding more trials Another way to think about it is that because the model in like intrinsically has this like um context length limit, and especially for some tasks like text to SQL, the problem description itself takes a lot of like um it requires a lot uh, like very like a large proportion of the context. So in this case, basically, uh, this self self debugging or self correction also requires the model to have a like um good understanding of of long context. And um, this uh, this type of performance can also saturate with like longer context. So basically, I would so I would say for the, this like improving the self debugging performance in general. So uh, so definitely um it is also still still like uh, important to improve the model's fundamental ability of like um doing long context and also to basically un understand like, multiple components of the input code. So this is why basically right now uh, for code generation. Uh, the models still generally perform like uh, much better on like uh, generating standalone functions compared to like actually um doing this like a uh, task where it requires like, more like a uh, kind of um um for example pr a project project level understanding which requires strong context and also this cross file dependency understanding which actually requires the model to integrate these like context from like um from from different parts of the projects yeah thanks for the question I see another uh, for the, another question. Uh, it says that uh, how this approach uh, works with like uh, with like smaller models, for example, the seven B models uh, that are becoming popular on device. So um so basically like um in, in right now in this project we uh we tried um uh, the small the uh, smallest model we we tried uh or, or like um like. Um, so it might be this like a uh, star coder model, which uh, includes a fifteen point uh, five B model. So, but in general, uh, for all the models we tried, we find that um, especially for uh, um for those like uh, more common programming languages, uh, for example, uh, Python, where the model is generally optimized for, actually, um, in in any cases, they said this self debugging can always improve performance. Um, um by by some no notable margin and this is especially for true for like uh with the unit test feedback then for like other then for other feedbacks for example for the co explanation and execution traces usually like those like um, more capable models um might be like um might be more helpful because actually they can they can generate higher quality like um like a feedback message by itself 
So, uh, but in any case, the uh, all these different models can benefit from execution, which which is like a very pre very precise feedback uh, coming from the ex external like uh, executors. Yeah, thanks for the question. Yes, I think we are good for the session. And thank you so much, uh, Sunyan Chan. That was a wonderful session. And it gave us a lot of insights on uh, self-debugging LLMs. And I'm sure the participants had a wonderful time. I see a lot of good feedback on uh, how interesting and insightful today's session was. Thank you so very much. And uh, thank you, participants, for being wonderful audience today and for posting your questions. It was really informative and exciting to be part of this today. Uh, hope to see you all in our upcoming uh, sessions. And uh, thank you, uh, Sunyan Chan, for your time today with us. Yeah, uh, thanks everyone for the great questions. And uh, thanks again for inviting me. Thank you and have a nice day. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Bye.